already at it back out on the track. We'll see the final of the women's Kieran very shortly, but at the moment it's the minor placings final. So let me hand you back to Hugh. Thanks very much indeed, Jill. Well, the riders are just tapping out a gentle rhythm in the well of the track here in the minor final. As you said, this is the competition that classifies the riders from 7th through to 11th. These are, of course, the cluster of athletes that uh, didn't win their way through from the semi-final. In the lineup here, we've got McCulloch of Australia, Frassoni of Italy, Quiff of France, uh, Monteban of France and Velta of Germany. But uh, I'm just about getting my breath back from that thrilling team pursuit uh, ride. An exhibition ride almost, because that performance by the Great Britain squad was uh, tapped out here in the arena on their own. It was a time trial, they just swept the Spanish aside, but the crowd, the atmosphere was uh, really something to be uh, privileged to be among. Now then, we've got three more laps to go in this minor final, and the winner of this will be placed seventh overall in the competition. And they're just... Uh, well, they're just uh, toying at the moment. We have lost a little dirty bike. It always swings off into the well of the track with two and a half laps to go. And the pressure now being lifted, and it's France that uh, go to the head here of the string, uh, beginning to just raise the pace with two riders from the same country lining up in a final. You should be able to place somebody in the top spot at the end, otherwise you've got your tactics completely wrong. But here they go, it's the final lap now, and right on the front, it's Quiff of France, who is a 500 metre specialist, but she's coming under pressure and the pressure is being uh, unfurled, really, by most of the field. They're all trying to get up onto the shoulder of uh, Quiff as they come up to the line. Oh, it was so tight, wasn't it? And it looked very much to me as uh, Midian Velt got that. Or was it a win for Frissoni of Italy? Frissoni may have just uh, t uh, taken that. This is it coming up to the line. Wasn't it close? Yep, coming through the middle, Frissoni took it. Velt, I think, was third. So... Uh, for Sony wins the minor final, and that will place her in seventh place. Here's a few images of the way the race unfolded in the closing stages. Good ride by uh, Frizzoni here. French girl at the back, just uh, looking for an opportunistic move, hoping that the gap's going to open up, but it's a, it's a dangerous way to ride, to be honest, and it doesn't often work out well. Well, uh, Frizzoni did get it. They all through the bikes at the line, but Frissoni was first, so she finishes seventh overall. Quiff of France second in that, so she finishes eighth. And Velta of Germany was third, which gives her ninth overall. And there it is confirmed for you. Closing 200 metres, just for reference, 11.8, which means they're around about 39 miles per hour, and that is moving. Now then, we move on to the final. And, of course, Great Britain's got interest here with Victoria Pendleton, who is a former world champion. She's trying to win gold medal number two here at this World Cup. And this really is a very juicy lineup indeed. We've got Anna Mears here from Australia, who is, without any shadow of a doubt, one of the finest 500-metre riders. She's been the Olympic champion and she's the world record holder. And also uh, in the, the lineup here, we have got uh, Xuan Gao, who is the current world champion from uh, China. Simona Krupakaita, the current world 500 metre champion. Uh, Agnes Ronner uh, of the Netherlands, Victoria Pendleton. And of course, representing Belarus is Olga Panarina. It's the rider from the Netherlands, that's Ronner. Now, let me just tell you about this little derny bike. It uh, picks up the riders who just drop in behind, and the drone of the engine tells you that it starts to lift steadily. It kicks off at 25 kilometers an hour, and then it uh, comes off at 40. In the men's race, it does the same, but it comes off at 50 k's. And really, it's uh, a bit of a fight to get behind, and then after that, it's all about getting yourself organized for the best position. You lose the bike with two and a half laps to go. This is an extremely popular uh, sport in Japan, where they all bet on the totalizer system, and the money goes to support hospitals, and you've got to be a good rider to get into the Japanese school of Kirin riding, and Craig McLean has actually raced out there. It's pretty cut and thrust there, eh, Craig? It is, and the, the, they have about 5,000 professional Kirin riders out there, and that's, it's extremely competitive. And guys, they see it as a job, certainly, and, and they, uh, they race up until 50 years old class, and it's like a league system, so obviously the, uh, you know, the guys that are 50 aren't racing against the, the, the new whippersnappers, so it's, um, uh, as you said, it's a, it's a great way to uh, generate revenue for the government. And, of course, it's slightly different in Japan as well because they have human pacers, don't they? They don't have a dirty pacer. 
Yeah, it's all human paced on just on a regular regular bike. Uh, they have a the pacer has an earpiece in, so he's he's directed by the chief judge, and uh, he tells him to pick up the pace or when to swing off. So there's no set point as to when they swing off. It uh, it depends if the riders behind volunteer the lead after a set point. And of course, uh, it's the Japanese Kirin Association that that run that uh, betting system. There's about 22 tracks, I think, around the country of Japan. They are big open tracks, unlike this indoor uh, arena that we have here. So the Kirin race in Japan is really a totally uh, different animal to this. Indeed, and running completely different rules as well. I think they, uh, they have nine riders in every race. As you said, all the tracks, outdoors. They, they have two indoor venues, but it's still a 400 meter track. So it's, uh, you can imagine the size of the, uh, the I know I raced in the pre-Olympics on Tachikawa, actually, which is one of the uh, the tracks in the suburbs of uh, Tokyo. All right, let's get back to the concluding stages here then of uh, this uh, final for the uh, women's Kirin. Great Britain in with an excellent chance because Victoria Pendleton is a former world champion, but it is the world champion at the moment, Gao of China, that's sitting in second place, and at the number one spot at the moment is being held by Mears. Now Pendleton beginning to make a move down the outside. She's got one gold and one silver medal to her credit so far in this World Cup competition, so she's got the good form. And she's looking for the good wheel as well to try and give her the uh, the best type of lead out. Now she's on a... Uh, well, she slipped away off the wheel of the uh, the Dutch competitor, and it's Krupa Keiter that now comes to the head of the race here. Krupa Keiter, the world champion for the 500-metre time trial. It's Krupa Keiter leading out Gow, and here comes Pendleton, the long way round to try and challenge. She's going to make it really hard work for her to try and come all the way round there. I don't think she's got the power to do it. Mears is in third spot at the moment, but it's going to be uh, Krupa Keiter. Krupa Keiter takes it from Gao, and Mears is in third place. Really, Victoria got herself too far back, and when she tried to come over the top, it left her too much work to do. She did, and against a world-class field like that, you just can't get away with it. Sometimes, if the pace isn't so high, then you're able to jump to the front, but as, as I said, they were just travelling too fast for Vicky to do that. Trying to come round the outside there. She's, uh, Vicky's always a bit unsure of Anna Mears because they've had a, they've had a few tussles on the track in, in the past and she's, she's given her plenty of room here, maybe a, a little bit too much. She did have a good wheel earlier. She was actually on the wheel of the leader now, Krupa Keiter, but she got pushed off it by the Dutch rider, Ronna, and then it left her far too much to do. And the run for the line, well, Krupa Keiter getting the better of the world champion, and that is Gao. You can see it here, the side shot. Krupa Keiter takes gold, Gao silver, Mears takes the bronze. And Victoria Pendleton finishes in fifth spot. That is the uh, conclusion of the women's uh, Kirin, and I can now confirm it for you. So Krupa Keita, Lithuania takes gold, Gao of China gets silver, Mears picks up the bronze, and Victoria, well, settling for fifth on this occasion. Cool. What a race. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, not, not the best for Vicky. I think she just needs to be a bit more proactive and get in amongst them earlier on. Maybe uh, try and fight for the bike a little bit more if she, if she wants the front position. Um, as we saw, it's very difficult to uh, to be at the back of the uh, the group here and trying to come round five other riders when they're travelling at nearly 40 miles an hour. Well, that's a good win for Krupa Keiter because she's a 500 metre time trial specialist, and she got the better, of course, of Gao of China, who is the current world champion. I indeed, and uh, as you said, she took it on from 500 metres out. And chance to look at the uh, images once again. Uh, the closing metres to the line, you can see Krupa Keiter holding off the stern challenge from Gao. Well, I can tell you we've uh, got Sir Chris Hoy now with Jill Douglas. Let's hear what he has to say. <laughs> 